All right, welcome back, everyone. This is a sh short tutorial on the squash and, squash and stretch principle of uh, the principles of animation. So let's check out a little bit about these, uh, these principles here of animation that we're talking about. First off, what are we even talking about? These 12 basic principles of animation. We're talking about Disney's 12 basic principles of animation. Written by Ollie Johnson and Frank Thomas in their book, The Illusion of Life, Disney Animation. There's 12 principles that we're looking at. Right now we're talking about the first one, which is squash and stretch. Basically, you want to exaggerate when a figure collides with another figure. You'll notice that with this ball here, uh, in figure A here, we see that the ball does not change in size or dimension. And it looks okay, but it looks better if you have the dynamic movement of the ball actually changing shape a little bit as it moves or when it bounces. You can do this with all kinds of things. It doesn't just have to be a, a ball per se. It could be a whole bunch of different types of things. But the main thing to look at is that you have some type of dynamic movement as, the, uh, as objects are moving through space. And something that you might want to note is you, you want the volume of the, uh, of the objects typically to stay fairly proportional. You don't want your, your objects to suddenly become uh, bigger or smaller drastically. I mean, you could, this is art, so you could exaggerate however you want to. But a good idea is to have the approximate volume of your objects be the same um, as, they, as they change over time. So let me show you an example here of kind of what I'm talking about. If you have an object that start, what, what we're going to do here is we're going to have a cube that's going to, we're going to have a cube that, oh, I'm still got fucking, go. So I have a cube that starts off the animation high up in the air, and then as it falls, it's not only going to, um, it's not only going to become longer, but it's also going to shrink in towards, uh, it's, it's going to become thinner. So this is something that you want to think about. You want to have your object not only uh, become longer, but you also want it to become thinner. This is something that's kind of an important thing to think about. You want the general amount of volume to remain the same, but you might want to have it become longer but also thinner. Now once the the uh, the cube hits the ground, then we're going to squash it down so it's going to become kind of normal sized again and then it's going to flatten out. So it's going to become uh, wider, but it's going to shorten. So we're going to get something like this. So when we have our, our basic model here, our cube, we want the volume to remain consistent as, as much as we can. It is consistent. So as it gets taller, as you see here, it starts off one size. As it gets taller, it will, uh, over time, it's going to get taller as it falls. And then once it hits the ground, it's going to get wider but shorter. And then as it jumps up again, we're going to kind of reverse these steps to make it go back around the other way. And that's the basic principle we're going to try to accomplish with our animation. All right, let's get into Blender here and see how can we do this kind of thing. So here we are in Blender. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the keyframes of, uh, of making the object here bounce up and down. 
And we're also going to <clears throat> talk about how we can cycle through the animation to make it happen over and over again. So those are the key things that I'm going to be talking about here in this particular lesson. We're going to be talking about how to uh, use our animation keyframes, how to affect the volume inside of the cube, and then we're also going to affect the, uh, the keyframes, or I'm sorry, uh, to, to cycle through so you can have your uh, animation happen over and over again. I'm going to use the default cube for this, because why not? All right, so we've got our, our objects here. I'm going to press uh, the camera view so we can look through the camera. I'm going to press N on the keyboard so I can see my, my little menu up here to be able to play around with the menu options. I'll go up to view and then click on the camera to view option here. And now I can move my camera a little bit. I'm going to move. I'm just pressing the middle mouse button. I'm holding down shift and pressing the middle mouse button down and then dragging to be able to drag where the camera view is. There we go. Probably something like that would be nice. Get a nice little view of this, this cube. I might zoom out a little bit. There we go. That's probably good. All right, the first thing I want to do is I want to move this cube. So if I press G and then Z, I'm saying I want to grab it and move it along the Z axis. And I'm just going to pick it up and move it up in the air a little bit. I'm going to start off my animation with my cube up high like that. I also want to put some kind of ground down. So I'm going to just uh, press Shift A to add a shape. You could also go up here to where it says Object. Or I'm sorry, Add. And you can add an area. I'm going to add a mesh. And I'm going to add a circle. There we go. Down here under the, when you add a new object, you'll see down here on the bottom left that it adds an object and you can add, you can change its properties here. For example, I can change its radius. I'm going to make it have a bigger radius. Make its radius like that big. That's fine. 10 meters. That's good. And then for fill type, I'm going to make it have an end gone fill type. So now it's a solid object as well. There we go. So I can have my cube fall down on this circle. And now it's got a little area there that it can be on. If I wanted to, I could also click on this object and, and uh, press tab to go into edit mode. Press E to extrude it. And I'm going to extrude it downward. So now it, it's an actual like cylinder column that's going to be perfectly level to the, uh, to the grid that we have here. There we go. I'm going to press tab again to go out of edit mode. Now I've got that platform. Just because I want to, I'm going to right click on it and go to shade smooth. So now it's going to have this weird look to it. Well, you know what? Let's keep it flat. It'll look, good. It'll look better this way. All right, so now I have everything ready. I have my, my general background here. Let's say I want to change the background color here. I could go over here to my, uh, to my world view, and I could change the color. So maybe I don't want it to be like this gray color. Maybe I want it to be like a purple color. Let's go Viking. There we go. So the world color, the surface of the background, I'm going to change it to be a purple color. And if I want to see what that looks like, I could go into my uh, shading view back here, or my rendered view, and you'll see that now it looks like this. I can see what it looks like with my lighting and all that. Speaking of lighting, let me grab this light. I'm going to change the light from <clears throat> the regular light that it is right now to the power of the sun. And I'm going to change the sun's power, the strength, down to 10. Maybe a little bit less than that. We'll say like 8. There we go. All right. So I've got my cube. I've got my, uh, my panel here. I can see the background is now purple. You can change it to be whatever color you want. If you want to change what the color of these objects are, you can go in and change the materials. So just go down to where the circle... Uh, checker uh, orb over here is. You can change its base color to be whatever color you want. I'm going to make this one blue and I'll make my cube uh, let's see, I'll make my cube like a, a darker blue. There we go. Alright, so I've got color. Excellent. Alright, now let's go into uh, 
let's go to actually animating this thing. So I'm starting off in this area. And I'm going to have my cube start off at this volume, which is if I look at the item, if I go up here to the top right and I can see what the volume of this particular cube is, I can see that its scale is, it's a one by one by one, which means that it's exactly one meter cubed. I'm going to try to keep my volume around that same uh, scale. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to click on the cube. And I, this is where I want it to start. And every time it jumps, I want to keep it at this spot right here. I want to, I want to make it go up this high. So I'm going to press I. And I'm going to say that this is where I want the location, rotation, and scale of this object at this time, which is keyframe one down here on my animation timeline. All right, now let's say oh, I want it to go, we'll say, 10 frames and in that 10 frames I want it to go from here to I'm gonna press G and Z to move it in space I'm gonna say it's gonna be about halfway down Let's say about here uh, maybe maybe like a third of the way down like here and I'm gonna mess with this the scale of these things so I want it to be slightly longer. I'll say 1.5, like that. And then for my X and Y, I want it to be thinner. So I'll say, oh, 0.75 and 0.75. So now my cube is becoming, it's, it's still got one meter cubed inside of it, but I'm stretching it out and I'm making it uh, I'm making it thinner as it falls. So there we go. Now that I have that set, I'm going to press I. And I'm going to say that at this moment in time, frame 10, I want it to be at this location, rotation, and scale. Ooh, all right. So I can see here if I go, if I go between these two keyframes, if I just click and drag on the number area here above this, you can see that it's beginning to change its shape as it falls. Boo. All right, let's keep on going. We'll say frame 20. Here's where I want it to be about two thirds of the way down. So I changed my, my timeline here to frame 20. I'm gonna click on that cue and press GZ. Move it down, I'm gonna put it to about here. And then I'm gonna squash it and stretch it some more. So let's see, it's Z. I wanna make this two. Now it's really taller. I'm going to make each one of these 0.5. There we go. And so I can see that my cube has now become more of a rectangle that is taller and skinnier. I'm going to right click on this. Or I'm sorry, not right click. I'm going to press I and say that this is where I want my location, rotation, and scale of this object to be at frame 20. So now if I look at this, ooh, look at that. It changes over time from that cube down to uh, down to the squish, the the stretching here. Now from there, I want it to actually deform and get smaller. When it hits the bottom here, I want it to squish down a little bit. So now I'm going to move this down one more time. I'm going to press G and Z, and I actually want this to be perfectly against this ground if I can get it to be. So I can zoom in a little bit if I, or let me, let me uh, move my camera back a little bit here. I'm gonna go out of my camera view so I can just see what this looks like here. And I'm gonna zoom in here and check this out. So first, I want this to be squashed. I know that I wanna to alter this to make it squashed. So I'm gonna kinda invert what this is. I'm gonna make its Z value 0.5. And I'm going to squash out the rest of it here, make it 2 and 2 and the X and Y. So it's going to flatten out a bit here. Now I'm going to take this and move it down. So I'll press G and Z and move it down here. Get it to where it's right up against this. Now if you want it to be exactly up against it, you can actually turn on your snapping tools to be able to move it in exact increments. Oh, 
I was holding down control there to be able to get it to snap exactly to the floor there. So now it's going to hit that ground. And it's going to stay right there. And for the location right here, you can also just put in zero. And that's going to move it uh, exactly at zero. Now you can see it's halfway through the ground. So if I wanted to move it 0.5 up in the air because it is... Uh, 0.5 tall in its Z in its C direction. That's just ensuring that it's exactly against the ground right there. I'm just using the measurements here. I can see that it's 0.5 in, in the Z direction and I'm making it 0.5 in its location to make sure that it's exactly on the ground there. All right. That's pretty good. I like that. Oh, I just moved. My cursor, there we go. So I gotta make sure I make a keyframe here. I'm gonna go to frame 30. And uh, let's go back to that same thing. It's gonna be 0.5 in the Z direction. It's gonna be 0.5 in the Z scale. And I'm gonna make it two and two for the X and Y. In fact, you know what, I might make it, yeah, that's, that's pretty good right there. All right, now I'm gonna press I. I'm going to make this the location, rotation, and scale keyframe for this moment. So now I can see that, ooh, okay. It gets a little bit bigger there. And actually, it looks like it gets a little bit too big. I think I need to make it thinner as far as the Z direction. So I'm going to make this, instead of 0.5, I'll make this 0.25. And I'll change its uh, height here also to 0.25. I think its volume changes a little bit when I do that. So let's just fix this keyframe. There we go. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, if I wanted to make it do this over and over again, I could simply copy these keyframes back and forth and we could edit them as need be. So I can grab this keyframe and press control C to copy it. To uh, select the keyframe, you just want to click on the little triangle, the little uh, diamond down there. I'm going to go back to frame 40 and press Control V to paste in. So now I can see that it's going to go back to the previous one. I'm just going to go in order here and copy and paste these frames back. And we'll end with the first one. So all I did was select each keyframe down there and copy and paste it. Now, if I play this animation, you can see that it jumps up and down. All right. Stretching, squashing, stretching again, and then going back to its original uh, size, its original shape. All right. Now that we've done that, let's see, how can we get this to cycle? How can I make this happen over and over again so that way I don't have to, like, copy these keyframes and paste them and do it over and over again. There is a more advanced way that you can do this. So let's check it out. Down here on the bottom left of our timeline here, where our timeline is, you're going to see towards the top left there's a thing where you can change what this timeline does or what window this timeline even is. And right here you can see there's a section that says animation. Right now we're on the timeline animator, which is really basic, but kind of cool. But what we're gonna change it to is the graph editor. Let's check out the graph editor so we can, we can fine tune this thing a little bit. All right, so what we see here is, we see a graph that represents all the things that are happening with our animation. We can see that there's a line that goes up and down right here. This is the Z, the, the Z position. So you can see that right here, it's falling down. That's what's happening right here with this top curve right here. This is the object that's falling down. Right here we see, this is going to be the, uh, the size in the Z axis. This, this blue line right here is the size of the cube in uh, the Z axis, in the Z direction. So we can see it gets taller up until this point here. And then it squashes down. And you can see right here that the, that blue line squashes down and then it gets taller again. 
and then it goes back to regular size. Very interesting. These other things that you see here are the other dimensions. So we can see that there's the uh, y, x and y direction is the yellow one right here, and that's when it gets thinner, and then it squashes out right here. It gets bigger along the x and y, so that's why you see it squashing. That's why it gets taller right here. So basically, the graph editor is a way for you to edit these specific things in a more controlled fashion. There's some cool stuff that you can play around with in here to be able to get it to look really however you want it to look. Like, for example, I could change the curves of these points. If you click on, a, on one of these points, you'll see that there's actually a, there's a way for you to be able to change the curves to make it edit in to where you could drop off faster if you wanted it to. Like maybe I want it to fall faster. And then uh, maybe when it squishes down right here, Maybe I want that to take longer. So I can change the direction of these curves. Look at that in midair. It's kind of stopping and then it's squashing down. Now this is all for artistic effects. You know, this is one of those things to where you can make it the way that you want it to. There's lots of things that artists like to do as far as uh, exaggerate in their own ways. Try playing around with these frames a little bit. There's no easier way to get in here, or there's no better way to learn than to actually just go in and play around with this stuff and see how it reacts. You can see right here that it's, I'm, I'm making it fall faster when it falls down, so it seems like it's smashing into that ground harder than it does when it jumps up. Interesting. So you can affect curves this way. And you can play around with the way that these curves work with these two. There's two little handles right here. And you can adjust how that curve falls. You can adjust the strength of the fall by dragging away from the points. Or you can uh, get closer. Let me zoom in here so you can see this. Each one of these black dots is a keyframe. And every keyframe has these little circles here that let you choose how fast or the, the power of the, the velocity of that particular change, and also what direction you want that change to move in. So there's a lot of like control over how fast you want these motions to be, or how, you know, how smooth you want them to be. So if we look at this now, it falls faster, and then when it jumps up, it, falls at a, at, it jumps at a slightly slower rate. All right, so how do I get this to cycle? That's why we got in here to begin with. Well, to cycle this through, you can go into uh, to key right here, this key menu, and then go to where it says add F curve modifier and cycles. And this allows you to have it cycle through uh, this animation over and over again. So if I click on cycles, now I can see, oh, look at that. It has suddenly it shows that it's going to do this over and over again. Let's see what this looks like when I press play. You notice that your play button may be missing here. So you may have to go back to your timeline editor to be able to press play. And look at that. It's only changing the motion of my, X, or of my Z axis. So the first one goes through just fine. But from that point on, it's only moving everything up and down. So I actually want to have all of my stuff, uh, all, of, all of the animation cycled through. So I'm going to press Control Z to, to undo what I just did. And I'm just going to do the entire transformation. So I have to select everything that's happening here. And then go to Key, Add Curve Modifier, and Cycles. And uh, that should make it to where now... It's going to actually cycle through everything. Let me select. Let me select these first ones here, and then add curve modifier cycles. Now, if you actually want to see what these cycles look like, if you want to be able to edit them on the side here, you have to press N. While your cursor is down here in the keyframe editor, you can press N, and you'll see over here the active keyframes that are happening. You can click on modifiers over here and you'll be able to see all the different modifiers that are uh, that you can edit over here. 
So something useful to know how to do, press N and you can go through and see the different modifiers that are affecting this particular object. So I want it to cycle through all this stuff. I'm going to click on here, go to key, add modifier cycles. And from here, I should be able to see my modifiers. I go to auto add modifiers cycles. I can see that now it's cycling through all those sections. Each one of these keyframes has its own cycle. So let me add this one in. Now it's going to cycle as well. You can see that it's doing its modifiers. If I add these cycles, it's going through. Looks like I didn't get the, the Y axis here. So an easy way for you to be able to get all of the cycles would just be to select all of them before you uh, make any changes. There we go. So I've got, let me, let me go back in time. I'm just going to press Control Z until my cycles get out of there. There we go. So this is like before I did any, any uh, cycling at all. I'm going to select all of these objects. I'm just going to select all the first keyframes that you see here. Then I'm going to go to key, add F curve modifier, and then cycles. So you could do each individual one like I showed you before. If you click on the uh, on the curve that you want to copy, that you want it to cycle through, you can, you can uh, click on that first keyframe, then press N, and then there's some modifiers over here on this side over here. You can go to this section, go to Add Modifier, Cycles, and then you'll see it go through a cycle. You'll see that it will repeat itself over and over again. However, right now, as you can see, I only have that one first cycle, or the, just the Z position. So if I want to change the other ones, i got to go and add another cycle over here. Now it's also doing that. I can go over here and change this one. And I also want to have it do the other frame. There we go. So now it's going to cycle through all of them. There we go. Now, what's cool about this, it's not quite going all the way. Let's get this last one in there. There we go. So if there's if there's multiple curve points, you can click on, or uh, if, if there's multiple graphs that are starting at the same spot, like right here, the, the scale that I have is on the same spot, you can simply click on that dot multiple times and you'll be able to choose the different graphs that are there. So there's X, Y, and Z scaling for this object. They all start from the same point here at the top. So that's why I, uh, if you click on the dot here at the beginning, you can cycle through which one you want to change. It told you you couldn't add the F curve modifier. Uh, let's see, you're going to have to make sure that you have the object transform selected. And you have to make sure that you're not, let's see, that you're not in object mode. So you have to be in edit mode to be able to change it. Uh, actually, I don't think that's the case. Let me see why that is. Why are you not able to do it? Object transform. Okay, because you have to have uh, channel editability enabled. So basically, you have to go down here, have your cursor over the graph editor, and press tab. And that will allow you to, to, to edit it. So you can see right now that nothing is, nothing is allowing me to open up. If I go down here and press tab, now I have my channels editable. And now if I go back over to uh, modifiers, hold on here. be 
able to edit now. Turn object mode. Ooh. Now I've got it stopped here. Key and make it editable. Channels editability. Toggle enable. All right, let's see here. Hold on. Caesar. All right, so we've got this set. We're about out of time here. The last thing that we need to do is we need to actually bake in this animation, or we need to be able to make sure that it happens. Um, we want to make sure that we have our keyframes set to the right amount here. Go ahead and get that set real quick. If we if, if we need to. Uh, change stuff in here, we can go in there and, and uh, edit it in just a little bit. I just want to get everybody to where you can actually have this animated. So I can see my keyframes here, and now it's repeating that motion over and over again. I want it to end at the right point, so I'm going to make it a little bit longer, 260. Yeah, it looks about right. Looks like it's going to end at uh, 296. Now, if I want to actually animate this, I want to go into my uh, my output settings. Go down to where it says output. Make sure that you pick a place where you want it to download to or where you want the, the end to go. I'm going to make it go into videos. I'm going to call it cube bounce. I'll accept that. Then I'm going to make the file format an AV or a FFmpeg video. Go to encoding. Change the container to MPEG4. Then for video codec, Make it an MPEG-4, or I'm sorry, uh, H.264. I'll make it to output high quality, and then I just got to go up to render and render animation, and it'll save it to my videos folder. I hope that you have a great day, and uh, until next time, be that person that you wish you could be. It's not too late, and remember to think for yourself.